Your end approaches. Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and welcome to the Dark Deity class overview part 6, which is the Adept class. I just want to say quickly before we get started that we really appreciate all the love and support that you guys have shown this series thus far, and um, the Dark Deity content overall, so uh, th yeah, thanks for checking it out, we, re we really appreciate it. Alright, so classes in Dark Deity, they're set up into 6 different trees, with the Ranger, Warrior, Cleric, and Mage available during the first mission, and then the Rogue and Adept coming shortly thereafter. Today we're going to go through a pretty comprehensive guide on everything to do with the Adept class, what you can expect from using Adept characters, where you can take them, their stats and skills, look, all the information that you need to plan out your Adept characters. Naturally, if you want to avoid spoiling the class unlocks, or the characters that are available later on in the game, you should probably turn back now because it's kind of hard to give a class overview without spoiling that kind of stuff. The Adept class is probably up there with Ranger and how diverse the builds can be, um, and ways that you can use the class. Their starting class skill in Chain is one of the best utilities in the game, and it can frequent strategies across every difficulty. It can be really utilized to save your bacon in the Deity difficulty, which is the hardest one. That's not the only thing that makes them useful though, they can specialize in either magic or melee damage. If you get early rolls in magic, you want to explore a nuke adept, that's absolutely something that can work. Uh, and I've rolled this build and it's pretty effective. If you want to follow the bolt tree for a mobility in chain range, then you've built yourself a chain bot that can move around and disable units across the map pretty easily. Adepts can even be dodge tanks, spec them for spear wielding throughout, uh, equip the strength aids in dodge chance artifact and you've got a dodge tank. You can go the astral route, grab lifesteal and get huge HP and just be a traditional beefy tank as well. These are just scratching the surface of the different ways that you can play the adept class. As you can see it's extremely diverse just of what we've gone through quickly already. It's really up to your fancy. As far as the overview, we're going to start with the stats and abilities of the base class in the depth then the stats and abilities of each promotional option at level 10, then finally the stats and abilities of the final promotions at level 30. The base class, obviously, it's called Adept. Their damage type is Piercing, armor type is Chain, they have a 5 space movement range, and their attack range is strictly 1. Their class skill, like I mentioned, it's Chain, and it just prevents an enemy from moving during the next enemy phase, they can't move across any tiles. First level 10 promotion for Adept is the Gale. Their damage type will remain piercing, but their armor type will change to leather. They get an extra movement range up to 6. Their attack range is still exclusively 1. And their first of 2 class skills is that you get a 50% chance to deal 1.3 times damage. So yeah, 50% chance to just pop up an extra 30% in damage. It's cool. Uh, and then they have a second class skill, which is a 15% chance to attack again, and that can attack, that can uh, proc on your double attack, so you can get a third attack in, it's pretty cool. The second option for your level 10 promotions is the first of the magic choices for Adept, and it's Blaze. Uh, naturally, it's pretty obvious that their damage type is going to be Fire as a Blaze. Uh, their armor type will change to Rune Cloak, or Cloak, whichever you prefer. Uh, their movement range will be 6, and their attack range will change from 1 to 1 or 2, so you get that, you know, range a little bit too. Their first class skill is they get um, a very similar one to Gale's first one as well, it's a 20% chance to do an extra 60% damage, It's pretty cool. Um, and then their second class skill is that when they get a kill, they get 2% extra power, that's the advanced stat after all calculations, for the, end of, for the rest of the map, and that stacks, so every kill they get an extra 2%. Third option for level two, for level 10 promotions is the Surge, uh, and their damage type is Storm. Their armor type will be Cloak as well as the Blaze. Uh, their movement range is 6, and they have that 1 or 2 attack range just like the Blaze as well. Their first class skill is a 25% chance to guarantee a hit and add 25% damage to crit. It's pretty cool. Second class skill is that their chain range is increased by 2. So if you're going for that chain bot route, will you you pretty much want to grab Surge. Last option is the Hammer Boy Reverie. His damage type is Crushing. Armor type is Chain. Movement range is up to 6. 
Um, he doesn't get that increased attack range. His is still one. So if you're going Reverie, yeah, you don't get to attack from range for a little bit. First class skill is heal for 33% of damage dealt, which is ridiculous. All the lifesteal class skills are really, really disgustingly good in Dark Deity, and this one is no exception. Yeah, the class, second class skill is that attacks ignore 20% of the enemy's defense or fortitude. Um, and you might be thinking, well, fortitude, how, how does that apply because I'm doing melee damage? Well, you see, we'll get there in a sec. Level 30 promotions for the Adept, the first being Windrunner. The damage type for the Windrunner is Piercing, their armor type is Chain, they have a 7 movement range, attack range is still exclusively 1, and both their class skills are 50% chance to deal 1.3 times damage. Um, and all of those, both of those stack, and it also stacks with the level 10 talent if you, if you took the Gale as well. So if you get all three of them to proc, well, you're probably going to kill whatever you attack. Second option is the magic promotion. It is Fire Lord. Naturally, damage type for Fire Lord is fire. Their armor type is cloak. Movement range is six. Their attack range is still that one to two. And the first class skill is 25% of your strength stat is added to magic. It's really good. Second class skill is you get a 20% chance to do double damage. So it's basically just an extra crit modifier that's exclusive, doesn't get counted in towards anything else. Third option is Thunderlord, damage type for Thunderlord is Storm, armor type is Rune Cloak, movement range gets bumped up to a huge 8, their attack range is 1 to 2, their first class skill is 50% chance for crits to deal plus 60 damage, so instead of double damage you get 2.6 times. Second class skill is crits on full health enemies deal an extra 60% damage, so use your Thunderlord first, take down those huge health bars. Last option for the promotions at level 30 is the Astral Seeker. Their damage type is Crushing for melee range attacks and Arcane for magic range attacks. Their armor type is Plate, they have a movement range of only 6, and their attack range is 1 for melee attacks or 1 to 2 for their magic attacks. As you probably guessed, their first class skill is that they can use Arcane Magic. What it does is it replaces your power and balance weapons with Arcane spells. And their second class skill is that they have a 35% chance to heal for 10% of their max HP, but also to bypass 25% of enemy resistances. That's defense for melee range attacks and fortitude obviously for magic range attacks. Alright, we're going to move on to characters in Dark Deity. Characters who are adepts in Dark Deity are the first being Elias, and he'll be the first one that you recruit if you're playing normal recruitment order. His default skill is that he has a small independent crit chance that doesn't uh, get taken away or added to by any other factors, it's just always there. The second character is Bianca, um, and her, her default skill is actually really good. Allies within two tiles gain 8% power, that's power not strength or magic, so that's the final calculation. 8% on top of that advanced stat is huge. Next is Orima, and his is default skill kills grant 2% power stacking so similar to that blaze one really and they and they stack on each other so if you take him down the blaze route that's 4% kill next is De Lanel, and his default skill is that he can't take 30% of his max HP in one hit so that means that you can build him for a fragile nuka and he'll just take hits all day really really great the last uh, adept character is iris um, and her default skill is very similar to the gladiator's talent skill and that she gets healed for 20 percent of her crit damage so naturally build her for a spear wielding crit build and it's gonna be great which pretty much works down any line uh, it's just a really really good default skill and that's gonna wrap things up for our overview of the adept class if you've had any particular success with specking a character down a certain class line grabbing specific level 10 and level 30 class skills. Well, we'd love to hear about your success and failure. We've gotten a lot of feedback from people on the YouTube about this, and we've actually brought someone to ride with us here at MGN. So if you're thinking you've got an idea and you're not sure, you're nervous about sharing it, well, do so. We'd love to hear about it. Um, we'd love to hear from you on the MGN.gg blog, our YouTube channel, of course, the new Twitter, at MGN underscore TV, the Discord. Put links for all these under the video as normal. Thanks for checking out the series, um, we'll see ya.